If you open your worship page to page four, page four. And what you'll find is our refrain is on page four and the verses are on page five. So if you know the song really well, you're welcome to sing the verses. And if you don't know them as well, let's focus on making sure we can do this refrain together. I'll sing it for you now. It goes like this. I will choose Christ. I will choose love. I choose to serve. Together, here we go. And I will choose Christ. I will choose love. I choose to serve. Good, and I'll sing the second half for you. It goes, I give my heart. I give my life. I give my all to you. Here we go. And I give my heart. I give my life. I give my all to you. Wonderful. Let's do the whole refrain one more time together. Two, three, four, and I will choose Christ. I will choose love. I choose to serve. I give my heart, I give my life, I give my all to you. Wonderful. And if you turn to our opening song on page one, this one I was hoping is one you would know as well, so that we can sing out freely together. Just the refrain. Feel free to join me. It's going to go rain down. Here we go. Rain down, rain down your love on your people. Rain down, rain down, rain down your love, God of life. Thank you so much for your attention. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Most Holy Redeemer. We are so glad you're here with us. Today is St. Vincent de Paul Sandwich Sunday. Join our MHR St. Vincent de Paul group in making sandwiches for those in need. And after Mass, please join us in the hall for coffee hour hosted by St. James Catholic School. Please stop by and say hello to our friendly volunteers. Do we have any visitors we can welcome today? I think we have a few. I think there's a little guy back yeah. here who brought some of his friends. So uh, how about some friends of Arlo? Is there any friends of Arlo here? Hey. Well, all are welcome to this place. Let's stand and welcome each other. Let's make a new friend. Meet, let's meet someone you haven't met before. Hey, good morning. Rain down your love on your 
We begin, my friends, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of the Lord, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Truly, we do believe that God's love rains down on his people. And we who allow ourselves to drip, to be soaking wet with God's love, we go out and share that love freely. The power of the Holy Spirit fills this place with God's love and with the joy of Christ's resurrection. Truly, this is the day that the Lord has made. We do well to rejoice and be glad in it. And on this beautiful morning, the church welcomes, welcomes in a very special way, Hillary and Felix, who present their child to us today. Hillary, Felix, what name do you give your child? Arlo Omen Clark Way. And what is it, my friends? You ask of God's, God's church for Arlo Homan Clark Way. Indeed, my friends, yes. You have asked to have your child baptized. In doing so, you are accepting the responsibility of raising him up in the practice of the faith. It will be your duty to bring Arlo up to keep God's commandments, just as Jesus taught all of us by loving God and by loving our neighbor. My friends, do you understand your responsibilities? Godparents, Chris and Terrence, you also have a duty, a responsibility, a blessing and a privilege to help Hillary and Felix in their loving duties and sacred vocation. Are you ready to accept this responsibility? And people of most holy redeemer, we too have a job, a job to do in raising up people of faith. By the way we live, by the way we love, by the way we serve our God and our neighbor, by our own profession of faith. Are you ready to support this family in their sacred vocation and parenting this child, Arlo? We are, we are indeed. My dear Arlo, the Christian community welcomes you with great joy. <laughs> and in her name, in her name, I claim you for Christ, dear Arlo, by the sign of his cross. And now I'm going to trace that cross on your head. And I'm going to invite your mom and your dad and your godparents to do the same. Yes, indeed, sweet little Arlo, this faith community, the community does welcome you with great joy. And so we lift our voices in joy as we give glory and praise to our God.
Let us pray. O God, who show the light of your truth to those who go astray, so that they may return to the right path, give all who for the faith they profess are accounted Christians the grace to reject whatever is contrary to the name of Christ and to strive after all that does it honor. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. My friends, now let us be seated as we listen to the Word of God. A reading from the book of the prophet Amos. Mosiah, priest of Bethel, said to Amos, Off with you, visionary. Flee to the land of Judah. There earn your bread by prophesying. But never again prophesy in Bethel, for it is a king's sanctuary and a royal temple. Amos answered Amaziah, saying, I was no prophet, nor have I belonged to a company of prophets. I was a shepherd and a dresser of sycamores. The Lord took me from following the flock and said to me, Go, prophecy to my people Israel. The word of the Lord.
a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavens, as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, to be holy and without blemish before him. In love he destined us for adoption to himself through Jesus Christ, in accord with the favor of his will, and for the praise of the glory of God's grace, that he granted us this in his beloved. In him we have redemption by his blood for the forgiveness of transgressions in accord with the riches of his grace that he lavished upon us. In all wisdom and insight he has made known to us the mystery of his will in accord with his favor that he set forth in him as a plan for the fullness of time to sum up all things in Christ in heaven and on earth. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus summoned the twelve and began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over unclean spirits. He instructed them to take nothing for the journey but a walking stick. No food, no sack, no money in their belts. They were, however, to wear sandals, but not a second tunic. He said to them, Where, Wherever you enter a house, stay there until you leave. Whatever place does not welcome you or listen to you, leave there and shake the dust off your feet in testimony against them. So they went off and preached repentance. The twelve drove out many demons, and they anointed with oil many who were sick and cured them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. I am no prophet. 
Today it's Amos. Remember last week it was Ezekiel and it was Jesus reminding us that a prophet's life was not an easy one. So Amos, Ezekiel, the prophets in our midst, reluctant, reluctant prophets, them and, and us. But Jesus, even though we are reluctant, even though the prophets throughout the ages have been reluctant, God never stops empowering. Jesus never stops summoning and sending. We're all commissioned. Every one of us, we are commissioned by Jesus. We're sent out each day, not just after Mass and we're sent go forth to love and serve. No, we are sent out every day to to bear the good news and to bear, to hold up and to help share other people's burdens. Whether we are shepherds and dressers of sycamore trees or whether we are pet owners or backyard gardeners, wherever we're at in life, wherever we're at in our faith journey, well, our faith tells us we are called and we are sent. Go out to make a difference. Go out to glorify the Lord by your very lives. And we're reminded, I don't know what you, but I need a lot of reminders, more and more so, as I seem to get more and more forgetful, as my close friends can certainly attest to. Um, but we need many reminders. So Jesus reminds us that we are called. We are called to bear witness. And we believe, this is what our faith tells us, and we hear it in Scripture really clearly today. We believe that when we bear witness, and we do our part to try to do good, well, God responds. In that beautiful psalm, the beautiful psalm, Psalm 85, which Marina cantered for us, we are reminded that the Lord gives us what is good. Kindness and truth shall meet, justice and peace shall kiss, and justice will look down from heaven. This is our hope, this is our prayer, this is what we long for, what we cry out for. And we know, I know this well, I experience it, I'm blessed in so many ways to experience and to hear of your experiences. It feels good to do good. It's very simple. It feels good to do good. Now, here we are encouraged, we are fed and nourished, we are blessed, we are sent to go out and yes, to do good. And the Eucharist certainly gives us that food for our journey. Now, pretty much every week I listen to this podcast. Um, it's called Preach. It's a Jesuit production um, that highlights a different preacher pretty, pretty much every week. Now, a couple couple of weeks ago, the, the preacher was, uh, was, a, was a person named Father Joe Laramie. Now, Joe started out his homily with um, what he called a Catholic tongue twister. So, I'm going to try to not let my tongue get too twisted. I'm going I'm to I'm give it a go. It goes like this. The body of Christ gives the body of Christ, the body of Christ to the body of Christ to make the body of Christ more like the body of Christ. Okay, one more time. The body of Christ gives the body of Christ to the body of Christ to make the body of Christ more like the body of Christ. So then he broke it down. So Jesus, the body of Christ, gives us the Eucharist which is the body of Christ, to make us, the church, the body of Christ, and the people, who, we are the church, to make us more like Jesus, the body of Christ. So, said another way, no tongue twister here, in the, in the Eucharist, Jesus draws us into himself, giving us his body, his blood, his soul, his divinity. He sanctifies us, it makes us more like him if we allow it also makes us i believe makes us more fully ourselves because i believe and 
it's witnessed by us being here. That we all want to live lives that make a difference, that we can do something, some little action or deed along the way to, to do good. And right here, right here in this place, in our community, our church, our city, our country, there's such need for love. And so we do our part to live love and to share it freely. And our faith tells us that the good Lord, the Lord needs partners, partners in his work of doing good and of giving of himself. The Lord needs partners in doing our part to work for justice and peace. And so that's where Jesus commissioned the 12 and commissions us to begin sharing in his work. So in the light of Jesus' commission, which we heard in the gospel today, maybe we're being invited to take a look at what we have and what we carry, and then maybe look again what we no longer need to carry, to shake off some of the dust that gathers. Because I think in life, we get a little dusty. The business of loving and sharing love, sometimes sometimes we get hurt. We make ourselves vulnerable. Sometimes it's hard to let go of the hurts. But that, letting go of the hurts, in a sense, is shaking off the dust, forgiving, forgiving ourselves, forgiving each other, and not letting ourselves become too uh, overburdened or too covered in, in dust, which kind of slows us down or impedes our movement. Now we do our part to simply love one another and to, oh, to keep on moving forward. Now I do know this, one person, one person cannot change the world. But if we choose love over hate, if we choose Christ, if we choose to serve in this, this we can begin to see the change, experience the change that we, that we so long for. I know you and I, but, but a handful of people in a world of some eight billion souls. And each one of us uniquely and wonderfully made, made for a good purpose. So today, part of our good purpose is to welcome Arlo here into this, our family of faith. Now, we probably don't think too often of ourselves as prophets, but you'll hear it again. In Arlo's baptism, he is anointed as priest, prophet, and king. So we're all called to be that loving presence, that prophetic voice, proclaiming here in this house inclusive love and going out from this house to freely share God's inclusive love. So yes, Arlo's mom and dad, Hillary and Felix, they have joyfully and proudly and gratefully presented their child for baptism. And we, as a community of faith, could not be more thankful to welcome Arlo into this little community that is all about inclusive love. And so as we prepare to celebrate Arlo's baptism, we turn to our loving God in those beautiful words again from Psalm 85. Lord, let us see your kindness. And Lord, help us. Help us to truly be your kindness. You know, I think Arlo's ready. He's been waving a lot. And that's, he's, uh, he's, um, he's kind of, I think he's ready to go. So Arlo, why don't you bring your mom and your dad and your godfathers forward and let us prepare for your baptism. Okay. And so we turn, my friends, we turn to our loving God. Almighty and ever-living God, 
You sent Jesus into the world to cast out the power of Satan, the spirit of evil, and to bring us all into the kingdom, your marvelous kingdom of light. We humbly pray for this child. Free him from original sin. Make him a temple of your glory. And grant that your Holy Spirit may dwell in him now and forever. So I'm going to put my hands in your head and I'm going to pray for the Holy Spirit. <laughs> and my friends, we turn and we, we turn and ask our Lord Jesus to look lovingly on this beautiful child, on this the day of his baptism, on his parents and godparents, upon his entire family, his entire faith family, on all the baptized and all people of goodwill. By the mystery of your death and resurrection, bathe this child in light as we celebrate his new life in baptism and as you welcome him into your holy church. Keep Arlo's family always in your love and renew the grace of our baptism in each one of us as we ask all the angels and saints to pray with us and pray for us. Dear, dear Hillary and Felix, along with Arlo's godparents, Terrence and Chris, you have come here to present your child for baptism. Through this sacrament, Arlo is about to receive the, from the love of God new life by water and the Holy Spirit. On your part, my friends, you must make it your constant care to bring him up in the faith so that this divine life which is given to him may be preserved from sin and grow in him every day. And so, my friends, if your faith makes you ready to accept this responsibility, I, I invite you to renew now the vows of your own baptism. Renounce sin, profess your faith in Christ Jesus. It's the faith of the church, and it is the faith in which your child is about to be baptized. And so, my friends, I ask you, and I ask us all, do you renounce Satan? I do. And all his works, I do. And all his empty promises, I do. Do you believe in God, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead and is now seated at God's right hand? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. My friends, this is our faith. This is the faith in which your child is about to be baptized. We are a people proud to profess it. In the name of Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. And so I ask you, Hillary and Felix, along with Arlo's godparents, Chris and Terrence, oops, is it your will that this child of yours should be baptized in the faith which we have all professed with you? Yes. My friends, come, come to the waters. Gracious and loving God, you have called your child Arlo to this cleansing water that he may share in the faith of your church and have eternal life. By the mystery of this consecrated water, bless Arlo and lead him to a new and spiritual birth. Okay. Got to... Arlo, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. <laughs> Give me an hallelujah. <laughs> Look, you get so caught up. It's, it's a moment. It's a moment. I, I love it. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. 
And my friends, behold the sacred chrism. This is this is oil. Uh-oh. Oops. It's all good. <laughs> Goodness, Arlo, what a day. <laughs> This is oil consecrated by our bishop and given to us for the anointing of the newly baptized. Just as Jesus was anointed priest, prophet, and king, so too are you called to be a child of light and a child of love. And so, dear Arlo, I anoint you as priest, as prophet, and as king. Okay, now I've got maybe a little towel in my pocket. Our faith is a light, a light to guide us along the way. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we celebrate this day that Arlo has become a new creation. He is clothed in Christ. May his white garment be an outward sign of his Christian dignity. Arlo, with your family and friends to help you by word and example, bring that dignity unstained into the eternal light of heaven. Lord Jesus Christ, you are a light, a light which dispels the darkness of sin and death. We turn to you asking that you would be always a light on the path of Arlo's life and on the path of all of our lives. Arlo, receive the light of Christ. Dear Hilary and Felix, and godparents Chris and Terrence, this light, it's entrusted to you. Keep it burning brightly so that your child, enlightened by Christ, may always walk as a child of the light. And persevering in the faith, may run to meet the Lord when he comes with all the saints in the heavenly kingdom. Arlo, reborn in baptism, is now called a child of God, for so indeed he is. Through confirmation, he will receive the fullness of faith in the Holy Spirit. And approaching the altar of the Lord, he will share at the table of Christ's sacrifice. He will call upon God as Father in the midst of the church. Now, in his name, and in the spirit of adoption as daughters and sons, which we have all received, let us pray. Let us lift our prayers, our petitions, and our needs. Let us pray together for our church and our world. For the church, may it continue to recognize and renew its commitment to the reforms of Vatican II. We pray to the Lord. For our nation, may we seek to set aside our differences in favor of our similarities and work together for the good of all God's people. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those impacted by the destruction caused by Hurricane Beryl and now struggling for shelter, food, and water. We pray to the Lord. For our community, may we foster respect and understanding for each other. We pray to the Lord. For visionaries and prophets, may we heed their call urging us to follow the gospel in our civic and personal actions. We pray to the Lord. For the sick, and ailing those suffering from chronic illnesses or physical or mental pain, especially John Felicetti, Annie Lubart, Sharon Martinkus, Ed LeClaire, Terry DeFazio. May Christ's love bring comfort and support. We pray to the Lord. For our deceased family members, friends, and parishioners, especially Leah Jenkins, 
Chuck Merrico, Sister Maureen Halley, Harry Fung. May they enter God's embrace in peace and in joy. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Gracious and loving God, yes, hear these prayers we speak aloud. Hear the many prayers we hold in our hearts. We offer them all through Christ our Lord. Amen. And my friends, let us welcome the newest member of our faith family, Arlo. <laughs>
Pray, my friends, pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look upon the offerings of the church, O Lord, as she makes her prayer to you, and grant that when consumed by those who believe, they may bring ever greater holiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ, our Lord and Savior. His death we celebrate in love. His resurrection we confess with a living faith. And His coming in glory we await with an unwavering hope. And so with all the angels and saints we praise you as without end we acclaim. of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, 
As we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, O Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. And remember, O Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Salvador, our Bishop, all the clergy, the religious, with your entire people. Remember also our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. In this Mass, the flowers are placed on the altar in remembrance of Lee Jenkins. Lee is Michael Kirkland's big brother. We remember Lee and all of our loved ones who have gone before us, all who have died in your mercy, Welcome them, O oh Lord, into the light of your face. And have mercy on us all, we pray. Hear our prayers of gratitude and thanksgiving on this day for our Lord, and on this the day of his baptism. Hear our prayers and have mercy on us all, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, the martyrs, with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. My friends, it is at the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, that we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, O Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. My friends, let us share with each other some sign of Christ's peace.
And my friends, behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
and let us pray. Having consumed these gifts, we pray, O Lord, that by our participation in this mystery, its saving effects upon us may ever grow. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. So I realized um, when I had my little mishap and broke the little lid for that, for that oil container, I should have said Mazel Tov. <laughs> Certainly a good sign and a blessing on this day of Arlo's baptism. So Arlo, where are you? Come forward and bring your mom and your dad and your godparents along with you. Mazel tov indeed. God is good, and we celebrate God's goodness and God's blessings. In many ways, that we are blessed, we are, we are called to go out and be blessing. Arlo has already, Arlo has already blessed us, this little faith family, by his goodness and his joy, by his gentle little ways, his greetings that he that he is giving. And now he's kind of, it's been a big, it's been a big day. It's been a big moment. He's kind of fallen off his sleep. So that's not bad either. So my friends, let's stand. We are standing. Let's, let's, let's ask for God's blessing. The Lord be with you. Amen. My dear friends, we ask for God's blessings upon Hillary and Felix, who are so grateful. We know this. We are, who are so grateful for the gift that God has given them and their beautiful child, Arlo. Arlo, huh, huh, Arlo how man, Clark, why? Close? <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. Okay. <laughs> I'm not going to try it again. <laughs> I know you are so grateful. We all know you are so grateful to God for the many gifts and blessings God has showered down upon you, my friends. And so we ask God's blessings upon you and upon your family. God is the giver, and we extend our hands in blessing. God is the giver of all life, human and divine. May Almighty God's blessings rain down upon you, Hillary and Felix. You will be the first teachers of your children in the ways of faith. May you always be the best of teachers, bearing witness to the faith by what you say and what you do. May the blessing of Almighty God descend upon you. May that blessing be with you and remain with you forever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. We give thanks to God for this family, for Arlo, as we again welcome him into our family. Everyone, please do join us for coffee hour immediately following Mass. Be sure, as Marina said at the beginning, be sure to thank our friendly volunteers. I think St. St. James, I think, is here helping us today. The Mass is ended. Let us go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord and our neighbor. Thanks be to God.